Section five is on cigarette litter. So I have a bunch of facts <clears throat> that I had you write down. The facts that I had you write down really come from this website that's down here and some of which I can tell that they come from reliable sources but some of them I cannot tell if the sources are accurate so as you <clears throat> as you start looking at some of this data and as we look at answering some of these questions I need you to keep in mind that we are only as accurate as the information that is given to us and so let me kind of walk you through uh, what some of this stuff is and what we're talking about here. Okay, so here you go. Cigarette butts. It's a dirty problem. Lots of cigarette butts get thrown on the ground every single day. As a matter of fact, there's a video that's on YouTube that we watched in class where it shows in Great Britain people walking around and they're just walking over cigarette butts and all that other jazz. If you feel like watching that video again, feel free to do so. It's a problem because according to some statistics, only 90, only 10% get disposed of in a proper way, whereas 90% of them get disposed of by being thrown as litter on the ground. <clears throat> so with that being said, you are going to have to take some things as, well, what are we going to do? The average number of cigarette smokers in the United States by uh, everyday smokers in California. So uh, if you look at this, we have data from 96 to 2004, and you can see that the number or the average number of cigarettes being smoked has been going down. Um, we do not know what's happening in 2005 or all the way till today, which is 2019 when I recorded this video. And so it may be lower than what we show here or it may be higher, I'm not sure. So one of the things that I decided to do for my class is I said, okay, you have all this, it could be lower, we could use a little number, but let's just go ahead and say, well, we know in 2004 it's 14.1 on average. Let's use that information talks about only 10% of cigarette butts are properly just deposited in ash receptacles. So that means 90% is not. Now I looked for, where's the site? Where did you get that information? I don't see it. Now then it goes even into how many different types of cigarette sizes there are. There's all this stuff that have a diameter of this and this and this and this. And then it talks about um, there being a regular size called the king size. Well, I'm sure that has a lot to do with marketing. We're going to just say, even though there's these different sizes of cigarette butts, because we're only going to measure this part because that has already been uh, used, um, we're going to just say, let's p figure everything based off of this. So we're making some assumptions. Even though we know there's a lot of different variables there, there's a lot of different variables there. There's a lot of different variables of how many people smoke cigarettes. If we use these basic facts, we should all have somewhat the same calculations. If we use that there's about 43.5 million people who smoke, we'll use 2010 data. It's old, I don't know. How many cigarette butts each day? How much are being littered? And then the volume of a cigarette butt can be estimated using an 8mm diameter, not a radius, a diameter, a 35mm height. And then we could use, of course, the volume of a cylinder because they're in a cylindrical shape. And when we do that, since we're measuring in millimeters, it's going to be a volume in millimeters cubed. That's important because... If we do any other measurement in terms of feet cubed, we kind of got to know the difference. And some of you, when you do your calculations, your calculations are going to get so big on your calculators that it's going to put things in scientific notation.
Good thing your science classes teach you that stuff, right? If you see something on your calculator that says, and I'm, and I know it's not this number, but I know it's something similar, 2.7 uh, times 10 to the 11th power. It might even say it like this, uh, e to the 11th. Depending on your calculators, if it gives you this, this is a scientific notation of a really, really big number. That's going to happen because we're calculating things in terms of millimeters cubed. So if millimeters cubed, if you know that there's 28,320,000 millimeters cubed in one cubic foot, that will make it room, not room size, but just measurements that we use for the rooms. And so for Mr. Paramo's class, what we're doing, my, my room in room 315 is 26 feet by 30 feet by 10 feet. You can figure out how many cubic feet that is and then take this number and divide whatever number you get to figure out how many of those fill up the room. And I'll give you a hint. It's more than fits in, in Mr. Promo's room. If you look at the library lecture hall, that's going to be our auditorium for my class. For my class, the auditorium, we're going to use 60 feet by 40 feet by 20 feet. And we're going to figure out what the volume of the LLH is, which is around this. And then I made some assumptions about Veterans Memorial Stadium. But I went and uh, figured out some dimensions. And we can figure out how many cigarette butts would fill there, how many days it would take to figure, fill up that stadium. So when you answer those questions, the questions that I'm talking about are down here. Um, What's the volume to fit in your classroom? Use Mr. Promo's classroom. Uh, how about the auditorium? Use the LLH. And then how many days of cigarette litter could fit into a stadium? Use Veterans Memorial Stadium with those facts. And then, of course, we're using the volume of a cylinder formula, which would probably be this one right here for you. So as you get into it, you're making your guesses. But if you want to know how many cigarettes are littered on average per day in the U.S., you got to take the number of cigarette smokers. And then um, you're going to need to multiply that by how many cigarettes per day. Cigarettes per day. And then you're going to need to multiply that by how many or what percentage are disposed of in the wrong way. And uh, percentage of... Um, thrown on the ground, littered, percentage littered. If you can figure out how many cigarette smokers times how many cigarettes that they smoke per day, and you know that it's a certain percentage, like we said, 90%, then that's what you're going to do to try to figure out how many cigarette butts. And remember, since um, that'll give you how many cigarette butts are littered but then they're going to ask you about volume so you're going to need to take that number and multiply it by the volume of let's use that the other little facts that we had which were the the volume of that king size cylinder dimensions and you'll go from there so i'm hoping that gives you enough that you know how to attack this problem and remember this is a part of the unit where you're going to have to use what you know to be able to answer questions using real life mathematics. Good luck.